Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. This is my fun little internet show about whitewater pathing and things like that. And today we'll talk about emergency communication devices. And we're, when you're out on the river, things happen. Things can go bad. You might, you might just get home late and you want to send a quick message or something to say, hey, we're going to be home late, don't worry about us. Or you could have a major life-threatening injury, a reason to evacuate somebody immediately. Or if you're on a multi-day trip, you might have to evacuate somebody over a, a day. That's not a life-threatening injury, but you have to get them out of there. There's reasons to communicate with the regular world. Also, you may just be addicted to talking to people. You might want to just bring your phone on a trip and, and chat with people or some sort of texter because you want to hear from your family. You know, 15 years ago, we never had these devices. So we went on a trip and we re removed ourselves from everything. Nowadays, people need to know how their family's doing. And that's their choice. And they may want to have a device. And I want to talk about a few different devices that you can use whether you're on a day trip and you just want like a quick emergency device or you're on a multi-day trip and you need to have something to communicate with the regular world or more importantly deal with some sort of emergency. So first of all it's just a phone. A lot of rivers nowadays have cell phone service and so having a phone with you is a smart thing to do. Maybe don't leave it behind. You know before phones if somebody you know went over a drop upside down in a kayak cracked their head open you'd have no way to help them. Where now you have this, and for that one time it's gonna be helpful, you're gonna to wanna to have a phone with you if there's service. Uh, a lot of modern phones, this is an iPhone, one of the new ones, uh, are waterproof, so you can just throw it in your life jacket, and it should be fine. I'm not very trusting of that, so I have a life proof case, so I take my phone and put it in my life proof case every time. This works great to keep it protected in my life jacket. Or just take your phone, throw it in a dry bag in your boat, you have to worry about it, only use it if you need it. You know, I'm a big fan of having a phone on kayaking trips now because I can take photos with it. There's a GPS on here. It's really useful. And uh, it's also a communication device if there's service. If there's not service, there's a few different options. This is a spot connect. This is a little tiny thing that uh, requires the phone. So it connects to your phone. You have to type on your phone to make it work. You know, I'm not a huge fan of this one because I don't always... I can't always get my Bluetooth and my phone to connect to this thing, and it's just it's kind of weird. Um, but uh, it's a really simple, small device you can just throw in if you have your phone too. And uh, next up is the, are the Delorme inReaches, and this is the one that they came out with a few years ago. This is kind of the first one. It's a simple device that only sends text messages. So no phone calls, you can just text through the satellite to another phone. And you know, I really like this one. Um, the texting's a pain. You have to like, you know, it's like it's worse than old cell phones. It takes a long time to send a text, but you can send and receive texts, and it's it's not too bad. I mean, in an emergency situation, if you to text somebody, you know, taking five minutes to send a text is probably not the biggest deal. And it does have an SOS button, so you know, if you do have a major problem, somebody is near death, or something where it's incredibly dangerous, you just press the SOS buttons some sort of helicopter should be coming to you. So that's a nice feature. In a life-threatening situation, these things are great. And this is the newer one. I think Garmin bought them. And so now this is the Garmin. It's a little bit more durable, a little more waterproofy. I don't know, it may actually be waterproof. It has a little carabiner attached. It's a little bit bigger than the original one. Um, but the nice thing about this is it has a little, a little bit bigger screen, and this one attaches to the phone easier. So again, it's annoying to, to text with this, but if you can somehow connect the devices and type with your phone, the texts go a little bit faster. And this is the one I'm starting to use more and more for our commercial trips as an emergency communication device. Any one of these have a monthly fee. It's about, I think it's like $15 a month, $30 a month. It's not that much. If you're kayaking all the time in wild places, to spend $300, 400 bucks a year on a t to have a quick way to contact somebody in the real world, it's great peace of mind. I've been carrying this in my truck lately, just in case I get stuck somewhere in my truck at a cell phone service. Um, you know, again, when I was younger, I'd be like, ah, I'll be fine. But now I just don't want to get stuck places, so I bring it with me. I haven't used it, but I definitely, it's nice to have it. Uh, the last thing that people use for emergency communication device, and I've used these a lot, are satellite phones. This is, you know, you turn this thing up, you turn it on, and it's a phone. It, it, it works pretty well. In my experience, you know, we used to use Global Star, which is the old provider. It stopped working. And then this is an Iridium phone. Iridium is another service provider, and they, they make these phones. Uh, you know, you're gonna 
it's going to take you usually a minute to get, get in touch with somebody once you turn it on and, and it starts connecting. You're going to have about two minutes of talk time before a satellite goes out of your range, especially if you're in a river canyon. When I'm on the middle fork of the salmon or the rogue, I can just expect to take a minute or two to actually get through to the person and about a minute or two of talk time before it dies. Wait five minutes, call again. And so it's nice to be able to talk to somebody. You know, the texting, the texture is great if you have a specific person in mind you need to text. An emergency contact out there, somebody you have to get through to. The phone, you can start calling people. You know, you can call one person, oh, they're not there. You can call another person, oh, they're not there. And finally reach somebody. You can call a sheriff's department, you can call search and rescue. If you have the numbers, uh, you can call 911. 911 doesn't always work with these, but it, it can. Um, so it's kind of, you know, they both have advantages and disadvantages. Then one real clear advantage about these, for, for me, it's $15, $20 a month, and I can only turn it on for four months. So, you know, I'm looking at eighty hundred bucks a year. A, a six-month card for this is like 400 bucks, And so it's just much more expensive to run these phones than the textures. And um, the past couple years, I've been putting both of these on trips, and we've had... Guys need, need to call me because, you know, some piece of equipment broke and they want me to get some before the next trip. Just not really important things. And we've done a couple of actual emergencies. And what we found is, is that for a real emergency, this is easier to use. For almost everything else, this is easier to use. Just because the immediateness of being able to get in touch with somebody, this is really nice. Where this, you send a message and you kind of hope somebody answers. And so um, this, this would be fine for everything, but the satellite phone's, you know, kind of nice to have. So for complete life-threatening emergencies, I'm starting to think these are better because they have these SOS buttons. If you have somebody who has a has had a heart attack, a stroke, some, you know, lost, you know, an arm come off, something crazy, that SOS button is just get, you know, get somebody in here as fast. That's the fastest way to get somebody, somebody here. So I'm starting to think these are the way to go. But again, I'm putting both of these on our middle fork of the salmon trips, and our rogue trips we're just using this. And so, um, yeah, that's emergency communication devices. Uh, this, one thing about it is this is my fun little show. This is my experience, my thoughts. I, I could be wrong about some of this stuff. I would love to know if you have more thoughts, if you have advice for me. I, I learned through that. So, you know, I, I could be completely right about all this stuff, about when to use things, what's good, what's bad. This is, you know, based on my own experience and my ability to figure things out. But I always learn from discussions I can have through comments or suggestions or your experiences. So I'd highly encourage anybody out there to add comments in the comments section down below because people looking into these devices will listen to this and be like, yeah, that sounds good. But they all also look in the comments. So, so those of you that are experienced and, and, and have used these, please add some comments in the comments section below. Uh, that's it for this episode. See you next time. Thanks.